Hello everybody, How Shrink here again with another live streaming. And as I promised earlier, this is gonna be about self-esteem, the third pillar of self-esteem, affiliation. As you know now, there's uh, three pillars according to my theory of biocognitive science for self-esteem, three components. One is valuation, the other one's competence, and the third one is affiliation. All are needed in order to create a complete person who values self and the people that uh, they choose to be with. So join me, and as you know, you can ask questions, and I will be very, very glad to uh, answer them for you. But we usually get a tremendous amount of people that join us, and they have really usually good questions. Leave the foolish questions out because it's serious. We can have fun, but it doesn't have to be mindless. And you know, some people come in just to play games. I think the audience that we have is really intelligent and focused and really wants to learn. So as you know, I'm a clinical psychologist and what I'm doing is I'm sharing information from my work and with relationships, self-esteem, and also how all of that affects your, your immune nervous and endocrine systems called psychoneuroimmunology. Okay, so uh, Jay Lee just joined us, hi. Uh, what I'm gonna do is try to develop a, uh, I'm not gonna try, I'm gonna develop a construct of affiliation and why it's so important. I'm gonna bring some anthropology in so you can see that we still have tribal ways of doing things. Even though we're modern, we still have tribal dynamics and anthropology. So why is it important for us to affiliate? Why is it important for us to have someone in our lives other than just by ourselves? You can be happy with yourself and you can be comfortable with yourself, but it's always good to have a connection. And the reason for the connection are several. One is that you're sharing a history you have someone who shares a history with you and existentially that's really very important to have someone that knows you and someone that goes from A to B with you and you can count on them and you can have uh, many other things that I'll be talking about. But first is that you have that connection. But also you have support. You have someone that supports you. You may have a, a beautiful day and someone celebrates that beautiful day. So it's not just about being down. It's about having the right people that celebrate your good fortune and to celebrate your uh, your accomplishments, and that's very important. Uh, and I'll be, as I go along here, I'll be talking about how to get rid of some people who should not be affiliated with you. Uh, Monica Morton, hi. Uh, all kinds of people are coming in right now, quite a bit. So be aware that you can ask questions, and also it's all about self-esteem, but especially affiliation self-esteem, the people that you choose to bring into your life. Okay, two things happen, you're born, and you have a family, and those people are part of your life. But some people in the family may not be great. They may not be good for you. Some of them are actually very toxic. So you have family, and you have chosen family and friends. The chosen family are the people that, that are worthy of being with you, blood family. And the friends and the people you bring into your life are also very important. They become an extended family for you. And that makes a lot of sense because we're social beings. We need to be validated. Although we know who we are, it's nice to be validated for the good things about us. Some people to challenge our beliefs so we're not living in some kind of fantasy world. So um, remember, uh, the, this live stream, you, you can have all kinds of questions about relationships and the affiliation part of self-esteem and how to get rid of people that are not worthy of you, and, but also how to bring quality people into your life. It has to do with how much you value yourself and how choosy you are in picking, in picking people that, uh, that actually are worthy of you. So, um, hey, Daddy. <laughs> hey, how are you? Um, Captain is in and um, just a, just amazing num number of people showing up. All right, so then the affiliation, what happens? As I mentioned earlier, it goes up when you increase the quality of the people that you choose to be with. It goes down when you just go with quality or when you continue to have a relationship with toxic people. Because what they're doing is they're chipping of your worthiness. And there are people that uh, you may share a history. They know you and they knew your grandmother and they knew your mother and your father and you went to school with them. But those people happen to be toxic, let's say. From the beginning, you go back and you think this person always had some kind of criticism about me or some envy there you have to realize that that sharing a history is not enough you have to have people that share a history 
in a positive way that, that, are, that are there for you, but especially have the ability to admire without envy. I keep talking about that because that's a very important quality to have. And if you don't have it, actually, you can develop it. You can cultivate admiration without uh, envy. It's very good for your immune system, actually. You secrete up very good hormones like oxytocin and neurotransmitters like serotonin and so forth. So it's very, very helpful. Um, Hank Clinton is here and people keep joining. So if you have questions, uh, uh, Marlene Brown, uh, feel free to ask questions and I'll continue to go giving you the dynamics of affiliation self-esteem. So I'll be talking a little bit of anthropology here. Uh, in anthropology, the word alterity means otherness, other than yourself, otherness, how you perceive others. And when you create a group, when you have an affiliation with people that, uh, that are going to be meaningful for you, then you are able to determine these, is, these are our people and these are other people. doesn't mean you put them down. It means that you have a, 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 a boundary that lets you know who's in and who's out. That's important in our social development. But you also have a sense of complicity that we, complicity not in a bad way that you're committing a crime together. No, in anthropology it's different. In anthropology it means that you have something that's specific to, to you and your group, specific and might, maybe even secrets that you share with each other. And that differentiates you from the rest of the world and from the, for example, the ability that you may have to trust someone and tell them intimate things that you can't tell anybody else. That's the complicity part of it. But you also are able to see the what's called hegemony in anthropology. And hegemony is when one culture imposes a belief system on others. At a um, macro level, that's when Germany invaded Poland. So they imposed their culture and their military and everything on Poland. And then you have to suppress your own uh, culture. At a social level, Sometimes groups can create hegemony, which is they impose beliefs on you and they impose things that you don't want. For example, they may push you into an area that you don't want to go to. They may put pressure on you to do something you don't want to do. That's hegemony. And that's not the affiliation that I'm talking about. I'm talking about affiliation that allows you to be yourself, that doesn't force you into drugs or into sex or into whatever, because you don't have to belong in places like that, uh, because what they do is say, they'll say, yes, you can belong implicitly. They don't say it directly, but you can belong as long as you do this and this and this. And if you don't do it, then we're just going to abandon you. We're going to shame you or we're going to betray you. So um, happy pride. Oh, hi. Uh, Cosmoholic. How are you? Um, Hermit. Welcome. So I'm talking about how to develop affiliation in a relationship. So first, when you work on valuation, which is the value that you give yourself that goes up, as you know now from my other videos, by keeping self-caring commitments. When you break them, it goes down. So as you're building the valuation self-esteem and you're building the competent self-esteem, which is how good are you at the things you do, then you begin to bring people in. Once you know your value and your qualities, you bring people in that are going to support that. You don't want emotional vampires in a relationship because those people are, are constantly going to be putting you down, especially when you're doing well. Um, let's say, uh, hey, buddy, you're uh, pretty. Hope you're having a good day, bud. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I am having a good day, and especially when you're here. This is an affiliation. You see, I'm bringing people in to my world as a psychologist, but also as an individual to share with you and to give you some ideas. Uh, Hey, uh, you're famous? Yeah, depending on where. If, uh, it, when it has to do with psychology and I have two uh, best-selling books and I'm well known for uh, psychoneurology, so it depends. If I go somewhere else not related to that, who are you? Who knows? So remember, th these uh, videos that I'm doing, these extended videos, you can't post them back on, on TikTok because they only go for 60 seconds. But what I'm doing now is I'm posting them on my YouTube channel, Dr. Mario Martinez. And you can go there, it'll be posted tomorrow, and you can see in the video in its entirety if you miss some of it. So um, that's an added value. And I would suggest that you, when you go to my channel, Dr. Mario Martinez, that you follow the channel. 
because that way you'll know when new videos are out and it, it expands the uh, the amount of people that I can uh, that I can reach. Uh, what are the names of your books? Okay, there are two bestsellers. One is the Mind Body Code, and the other one is the Mind Body Self. You can go to Amazon and you can get them there. The Mind Body Code is how the mind and the body communicate with each other, and the Mind Body Self is how they communicate with each other in a cultural context. Culture is extremely important. Culture can heal you or kill you faster than your genes. And that's what I talk about in my books. But the good thing about them is that each chapter has, at the end, practical exercises. So you can then are able to assimilate what you learn from the uh, chapters. But then it has a glossary for new words. There's a lot of new words that you can learn. And then it has a bibliography for those of you who want to see the science behind the things I'm talking about. Uh, I actually have heard of them. Well, very good. Yes, they're, they're, they're quite uh, well known now in the field. And uh, they've been translated to uh, Polish, Czech, uh, Italian, French. Oh, and Arabic. The latest is Arabic. So uh, that's pretty good. Um, so what happens is that when a publisher publishes my book in, in, uh, in English, then they sell the rights to, let's say, Poland or other countries to be able to publish them in the language. And then, of course, we continue to get royalties. But uh, they're in English. They're not in Spanish yet. It's so interesting. Not, Spanish is the third most spoken language in the world, and yet they're not. So I don't know why. So those of you who just joined me, how shrink, I am talking about the third pillar of self-esteem, which is affiliation. The people that you choose to bring into your world and the quality of the people that you choose to bring into your world because they nourish you. Of course, you nourish them. You create what I call a co-authorship. And that co-authorship is important because you need validation. You know who you are, but it's nice for people to validate who you are. But especially people who can say, I'm so glad that you did this, or I'm so proud of you for that. It's very nice. It doesn't feed the ego. It, feed, it feeds the, the heart. It feeds the, the totality of who you are. So it's very important. So in affiliation, self-esteem, one of the things that you look for also is people who have the ability to accept with gratitude compliments, but also who can give you compliments who and who can accept you being grateful with a compliment rather than, uh, I like your shirt. Oh, I haven't washed it in three days. You know, that kind of thing. You don't want to do that. Thank you so much uh, for liking my shirt or thank you for liking my accomplishments or whatever. Because if not, then it becomes something that it's, it's false as a pseudo humbleness that we learn in our cultures. They tell you, be great. And when you're great, don't let people know about it and don't acknowledge it when you're great. And that's just the, the false um, modesty that I, that I dislike. I like people who, if you tell them, um, I like uh, your hair. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. But don't ever say no problem because you know how I feel about no problem. No problem is just wasted language and it's a consciousness of avoiding problems. So be grateful rather than avoiding problems. Um, do I know the, the uh, country singer uh, Jenna Tolls? No, I don't know her, but I have had some patients who are very, very famous in country music. Of course, that I can't tell you names because of confidentiality. But, uh, um, but anyway, no, we're not talking country music here, so focus back on affiliation. But I, I, I know you asked because you know that I live in Nashville, so it's okay. But stick to questions here that you can get something from it. Um, uh, I want to give a compliment, and it's like a rejection of my admiration. <clears throat> That's exactly right. That's what happens. That's uh, Samantha coming up with a point here, that when people do not accept your compliments, and, and it's they're taught. It's not that they're bad. They're taught to react that way by the culture, and and they're taught to to... Oh, I love your car. Well, I just got it because the other one broke. And you don't have to excuse yourself. Thank you. And what you're doing is you're sharing gratitude and generosity together. And that's really very helpful. So uh, if you just join me, a lot of people here, uh, raising 17. Um, hi, Grandpa. Hey, what's this Grandpa thing? <laughs> I love your book. Um, thank you. And uh, I, this one is unpronounceable. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, some people here have a very nice uh, sense of humor, um, uh, bordering on the smart ass, but that's that's pretty good. And that's it's all right. It's uh, acceptable here. Uh, okay, so 
self-esteem, affiliation self-esteem. Many people joining, make sure that you ask questions. So the um, affiliation self-esteem is so important because let's see, I took your advice from last week. You said to take steps to what you want to become. Excellent, that's right. You're, you're constantly taking steps to what you want to become. You're not what you were told you are. Uh, you're, you are what you choose to be. Rather than trick, try and trick your mind. Yeah, you don't want to trick your mind. You don't do um, fake it until you make it. That's just uh, pseudo psychology. That's not real science. What you do is you know who you are, look at your qualities, and you cultivate those qualities. And then you individuate. There are people who are not going to like it. There are people that don't like your growth because if you grow, then they have to grow. So it's easier to criticize than to admire. Can you give me some advice too? Advice on what? Tell me specifically and see if I can tell you. Meanwhile, we continue with affiliation self-esteem. Another thing that uh, the affiliation, the people that are in your life can do, is that they can also sometimes challenge your beliefs because you have to be open. You, you don't have to be defensive about everything is right because then you'll be a dictator. But they challenge your beliefs without putting you down with conversation rather than with criticism, with dialogue. And one problem, political correctness, is polit political correctness is tyranny. They don't allow any dissent. This is how it is and this has to be. No, hell with that. You have to be able to discuss things logically, intelligently, and with mutual respect. Uh, it has helped me to get through the day. I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you very much. I'm really, really glad to, to see that happening. And this is what I'm trying to create here, a support, a subculture of wellness where you can come in and learn from it and then apply it. But let everybody know, this is growing very, very fast. Some of my videos are close to 30,000 views in just a few weeks, so it's really moving well. But make sure you follow and let people know that this is available here. And they can go here and they can also go to my uh, YouTube channel to see many videos, over 130 videos on the topics that I talk about and much more. And the uh, channel is Dr. Mario Martinez, you too. And there I have over half a million views already. <clears throat> so it's a very popular channel because I have good stuff to, to offer um, because of my experience and because I'm really committed to trying to help people to grow. I'd love it when people reduce their suffering. I think that's a beautiful thing. If you have tools to do that, you have the ability and the professional training to do it, it's a beautiful thing to do. So uh, Adobo Coder, Adobo Coder. Hi. Welcome. Sadie. Uh, short stack uh, shenanigans. Uh, all these creative names are here. So if you have any questions, Kevron 500. There's some repeats here. I'm seeing some people that are uh, Brimax 4 who have been here before. So they're becoming regulars. And the more regular you become, the more you'll understand my theory and practice of biocognition. Amazing. Congratulations. Happy for you. Uh, I will definitely recommend your channels. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, that's what I want to hear. Uh, to share the good news. That's what it's all about. You know, the word gospel means good news. So it's a sharing of good news. This is not religion, but gospel means good news. So we're sharing good news here. With good science, not some kind of pseudo science. That uh, Do I play golf? No, I don't. I don't play golf. I, I've tried it and it just didn't work out for me. Uh, the only I haven't done any any group sports. The only thing that I've done is karate. I, I've done taekwondo. I have a black belt in taekwondo, but no, I don't play. But uh, the people that play just love golf. So uh, if you do enjoy it, uh, Brenda Butler just joined us, and uh, Racing joined us. Uh, uh, the real uh, can't make this one up. So uh, how are you qualified as a doctor? Okay, I'm a licensed clinical psychology. My doctorate is in clinical psychology, and my specialty is in neuropsychology and psychoneuroimmunology, which studies how thoughts, emotions uh, affect each other uh, and, in, and how they affect the regulation of the immune, nervous, and endocrine system. One of my mentors was Dr. George Solomon, who is the one who created psychoneuroimmunology, so I had some really, really good mentors, um, and uh, I'm, I'm very pleased for that. Um, where did you get my doctorate? University of, of Madrid. And then I did postdoctoral work at uh, Vanderbilt University and also some postdoctoral uh, work at uh, 
other universities in uh, psychopharmacology and uh, a few other things. And I've practiced for many years and uh, been an instructor at several universities. Uh, so now what I'm doing is spending time with you here to see if I can help you in, uh, in any way. Okay, uh, Joni Baldwin just joined us and racing just joined and I was asking about the, where I got my doctorate. Um, and uh, let's see, feeling in a funk, what would you recommend? What are the conditions that bring you into a funk? Which of the three, which of the three self-esteems are being affected now? Your valuation self-esteem? Are you devaluing yourself? Your competent self-esteem? Are you feeling incompetent in some things? Or are you feeling lonely because you don't have the affiliation? So find out what that is. And sometimes you need to, when you go into a funk, as you say, sometimes it's just that you need time for yourself to reflect and find out what's going on, regroup, and then come back. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, you, can, you can actually go, if you stay too long, then it's not good. But this is where you have affiliation, not for people to tell you, oh, it's okay. No, you don't need that. Just need connection with people, with meaning. Uh, that's very cool and interesting. Thank you. Um, work. Uh, love life single mom single mom congratulations for being a single mom and uh, you have a lot to offer as a single mom and you have some very good things that you can do and also work on the three parts of self-esteem especially affiliation here uh, I apparently need to go get your book I agree with you you need to get my book uh, because that's how I make my living <laughs> but I also give out a lot of uh, free advice advice for a college student with no Motivation to get good grades. Uh, why should you get good grades if, uh, if you don't have anything that, that you feel you're going to do with it? Why should you get good grades if you are bored with subjects? Find out what you need. Find out what your abilities are. And you don't wait to be motivated. You do what you need to do. You jump in and you do it. The courses you're going to love and the courses you're going to hate. But eventually you'll see that they all come together. So you don't have to be motivated. You just do it. You make the commitment and you do it. Remember... The self-esteem that has to do with valuation means that you make self-caring commitments. And self-caring commitments is one, to have good grades. Why? So you can have more opportunities to, uh, to go to uh, other schools or to get better jobs, but especially to learn. Getting good grades is nothing. It's what you learn. And if you're learning, you'll get good grades. But uh, not every course is interesting. I had some incredibly boring courses that I had to just work through um, as if I were in a salt mine. But I did it, and then once you do it, forget the motivation, once you do it, you're gonna feel really good about the accomplishment that you have made. And then reward yourself after the accomplishment. Say, I'm a good person, do something with a friend, celebrate when you get good grades. And be careful, because sometimes you're taught that to get good grades, that means that you're a nerd, or that you're kind of weird. Don't worry about that. People that call you nerd when you're getting good grades, you'll have a good job and they'll have a crappy job because they were so cool that they couldn't get good grades. So it's a bit of a, an envy kind of thing. Uh, Maxer Monkey, Cody, quite a few people here. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> number three. Okay, so I just, just joined. This is House Shrink talking about affiliation self-esteem, the three pillar, the third pillar of uh, self-esteem according to my theory. And all of these things are in my book extensively in my books in the mind body code and the mind body self that some of you already have uh, and you can get them at amazon and they are they're really great books because i put a lot of time uh, thank you for the advice you're welcome brazen uh memes memes uh jonathan wow it, it's just exploding which is always really great pedro zapata how are you pedro you notice I didn't say Pedro Zapata. Got to pronounce it right. It's Pedro Zapata. Good. Uh, what about uh, balancing social life and drinking with school? Everything in moderation. Everything in moderation. If you drink too much and you get a hangover before a test, you're screwing yourself. But if every once in a while you have a beer, you have wine. Let me tell you something about drinking. If you're not having a good time, you're going to drink more than if you're having a good time with people. If you're talking about things that have meaning you're going to drink more than if you're talking about stupidity so those are the things that you can do but you also know that when you go somewhere you say i'm going to limit myself to two drinks one drink three drinks whatever 
try to pace them so you don't just gulp it. But once you reach that limit, you stop. Because there's a lot of joy in control. When you're able to control your life and yourself, there's joy there. You feel good. You feel Spartan or you feel Athenian. It's really powerful. Try it and you'll see what I mean. Try it. It works. But you have to cultivate it. You have to learn how to do it. You didn't learn how to ride a bike in two seconds. It took you a while to get the balance. Same thing here. Uh, Maria joined us. And uh, Berserker Burns uh, also joined us. And if you just did, how shrink here, talking about affiliation, self-esteem, which is the third pillar of self-esteem, which means the people that you choose to bring into your life to celebrate your good fortune, but also to deal with your bad times. People you can count on. People that are not gonna betray you, abandon, or shame you. But if something happens, it's really very important. Uh, Jojo, uh, heck, join. Okay, it's very important that you realize that when something happens, nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect. People are gonna screw up. When something happens, use what I call looking at the totality of the relationship so you can put it in perspective and it's not what have you done for me lately. It's very important to do that. When you put it in perspective and you see that nobody is uh, perfect and then you say, okay, this person's been my friend for two years, been a really good friend, now this, my friend screwed up, okay. Let's work it out. Let's work it out because it's worth it. Now, if you have two years of BS and nothing good about it, then get rid of them. That's it. You don't want to be with people that are going to toxify you. It's very important. You're too worthy for that. And this is what I'm trying to build here. Self-esteem so you can feel your worthiness. And when you feel your worthiness, then you'll be more selective in the people that you choose. You don't need a lot of people. And don't stick to only media. And, and, and people uh, out in the, uh, in the social media. Real connection with people is very important. I'll give you an example. When you go out somewhere or with a friend and you smile, and that friend smiles back, it doesn't have to be sexual or anything, just a, a, a smile, a recognition, something pleasant, you secrete something called oxytocin, which is really good for the heart and good for many things, neurotransmitters and everything. But if you do it here, if you're smiling at someone here, the oxytocin is reduced or it doesn't come uh, across at all. So the immune system knows the difference. You can't BS the immune system and the endocrine system. They can tell. So um, Adrian, uh, quite a few people are joining here. So feel free to ask questions and I'll try to answer them as much as I can. And I also recommend that if you want to see the totality of this uh, video, you'll be able to see it tomorrow. It'll be downloaded up to uh, my... Uh, my YouTube channel, which is Dr. Mario Martinez, and you'll be able to see the whole thing. I can't in TikTok because, as you know, it'll, you only have 60 seconds, or you can do a stream like this for up to an hour, but it, you're not able to show it. So uh, what I've done is, in order to make it available, is to put it on my uh, YouTube channel, which has huge following, uh, and I recommend that you also follow so you can stay in touch with the work. Uh, so how do you change pushing uh, uh, pushing all types of people out of your life? Well, I think that's what you're trying to say. I'm not sure because I wasn't clear what, what you were saying, but I think if it has to do how do you get people out of your life, is that first you have to evaluate what they're doing in your life. You have to look at patterns. In psychology, you look at patterns, not one event because uh, nobody's perfect. But if you see a pattern of that person being envious or putting you down or being unreliable or not being there when you need them or not being able to feel admiration for the things you do without envy, then your question is, why do you want to be with someone like that? You drop them. You don't ghost them. Never ghost anybody because you know how I feel about ghosting. Ghosting is a cowardly act. You never do that. You let them know, look, I'm moving on with my life to betray you and then go back to your life and find out who shamed you who abandoned you who betrayed you and who taught you by their actions not by what they said who taught you that it's dangerous to bring people into your life so once you learn that read my books by the way because i talk a little bit about a lot about that actually and uh, uh the mind body code especially uh, but also the mind body self so you can learn to bring people in gradually but always quality people not quantity quality 
So uh, I'm glad you asked that question, uh, uh, Sandy or Sadie. It's hard to see it because I have a white background and the and the letters are in white, so some of them uh, set to wear more dark uh, Hollisters. And I'm not getting paid for this, just that I love Hollisters, and so I wear Hollisters to do my my videos here. Okay, Nay Nay just joined us. Uh, so I hope that helps in answering, Sadie, that question. Uh, it takes a bit, but you first have to go back to what is it that it, how did you learn to avoid, is the question. Stephanie just joined us, um, and if you just joined us, I am How Shrink, talking about affiliation self-esteem, which is the third component of self-esteem, according to my, to my theory. How much what? I'm not sure what you mean. Stephanie, how much? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking or what. Uh, Katie? VSB, Alex, uh, quite a few people joining as usual. It is very popular, becoming very popular streaming here. Uh, and what I want is for you to, if you have questions, to ask questions. And uh, if you don't, then just go to my, uh, uh, to my YouTube channel tomorrow so you can see the whole thing and many, many other. Uh, hi, Katie. Uh, LEB, hi. Uh, I'm not sure who was asking how much, how much what. Uh, the books? They're at Amazon, depends on what you get. There's um, Kindle and audio and, um, and hardcover and softcover and so, so forth. You're handsome. Oh, thank you. It's very nice for you to say that. You see, if you were a little humble, you would say, oh, no, 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 I'm just, I'm wearing glasses. Thank you, I appreciate that. Wonderful. And this is what I'm trying to teach people here, that you wanna be gracious when someone gives you a gift, a compliment or appreciation. Just thank people. Uh, so then, when you're grateful, you allow people to feel good, but you also allow it to come in and to be accepted as a, as a gratitude. And gratitude, again, is very good for your health. People that have the ability to feel gratitude without fear have very good health, actually. So it's very good. Um, can you briefly re-explain affiliation as part of self-esteem? Yes, of course. Um, self-esteem, as I see it in my theory, is broken into three parts. I call them three pillars. One is valuation. How much do you value yourself to allow good things to happen to you without sabotaging or without getting sick? And that's what happens when valuation is low. Competent self-esteem is the second, which has to do with how good are you at what you do and how can you improve what you do? Affiliation self-esteem is the one that has to do with the people that you choose to bring into your life to share the good qualities of your life. Uh, these, these people could be chosen family, biological family, and you, you, there's some toxic people that you leave out just because they're genetically connected doesn't mean you, you have to be with them. So you have your chosen family, your chosen friends, and you create that subculture of wellness, and that's the affiliation self-esteem. It goes up when you increase the quality, you increase the rituals that you do with those people. It goes down when you just increase the quantity without considering the quality. Also, it goes down when you allow emotional vampires to toxify you. So that's, in essence, the idea of affiliation self-esteem. Um, user 04813, uh, beef, tips. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> some great names here. All right, who else is coming in? And um, uh, band kid questions about affiliation, self-esteem, and also relationships in general, if you want to ask about it. And affiliation doesn't mean just uh, uh, romantic. It means all kinds of relationships. Uh, can you describe emotional vampires? Yes. An emotional vampire is someone who gets in, up in the morning and says, whose life am I going to screw up today? Who am I going to drain today? And how can I, how can I find faults in, in all the people that I know and let them know the faults. Um, or they, for example, if you say, uh, you know, I'm thinking about uh, buying a new car. Buying a, a new car, that's going to be very costly. It's downers. They, you know, they, they rain your parade. And you feel, you know that you're with a vampire, you feel literally drained after you've been with people like that. After you see them, you feel drained, as if you've done a marathon, because they're draining you. They're draining your energy. They're draining your your goodness. So you don't want people like that in the world. You let them go. Um, that they're just projecting their own insecurities. Yes, their own insecurities, their own uh, unresolved hatred, 
their inability to forgive themselves, their inability to see, to see goodness in the world. And they learn these things. They maybe come from bad backgrounds, but, but they're people that come from good backgrounds and good up, 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 upbringing, and, and they're just real uh, toxic. That's just how they choose to be. But usually it's afraid of getting connected with people. It's usually a way to keep you at a distance. And uh, now let's say if you have a toxic family member that you want to keep, a mother or father you want to keep and you don't want to dump them, then what you do is what I call the um, milligrams of love. You figure out how much you can give them without getting toxified. And the way to measure that is you do like a little scale and you will say, okay, between resentment and guilt, how do I balance? So if you say, okay, you have a mother that's toxic and you say, if I don't see my mother in a year, how would I feel? You might feel guilty. If I see her every day, how would I feel? Resentful. So you use resentfulness and, and, and guilt together and say, okay, I can handle seeing her once a week for two hours. That's what you do. Then you go committed. You don't buy into the toxicity, but you will see that after a certain amount of time, that's what I talk about the milligrams of love. They'll say, uh, everything's going well and you're feeling good and oh, this is wonderful. And all of a sudden they say, I noticed you gained some weight or your classes don't look good. That's when they're saying, okay, that's as much love as I can handle. How can I screw this up? So the, the lovey lovey stops. At that time you stop and you say, mom or whoever it is, it was so great to see you, I gotta go. Or the toxic people <laughs> that you, you'll know because we all have them, uh, you don't call the, a, an uncle or someone or a friend in three months. And the first thing they say, instead of saying, oh, I'm so glad to hear from you, they say, oh, you haven't called me in three months and you feel this drain. What do you do with that? Never excuse yourself. Play with them. Say, really? No, that's great the way you keep time. It has been three months. How are you doing? Well, I'm a little upset with you because you haven't called me. All right, but now that I'm here, what do you like to do with me? I'm upset with you. What do you need from me? Well, not to uh, go for another three months. You know something? Phones work both ways. You can call me anytime you like. Oh, I'm really upset with you. Okay, I'll tell you what. Why don't we talk some other time when you're not upset? Because I called to celebrate our friendship, not for you to uh, bring yourself down and bring me down. So I'll see you. That's what you do. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that you do with people like that. The reason you don't call is because every time you call, it's like a beat up. That's the reason, but they don't get it. Uh, let's see, uh, lovely Lynn, lovely Lynn, Jack, Frank, all kinds of people are joining. And be aware that this is about affiliation, self-esteem, the people that you choose to bring into your life so that you can celebrate good things. Am I an emotional vampire? You tell me, I don't know. Do you think you are? And if you are, why? No idea. I can't tell. <laughs> so let me know. And maybe you are. And if you are, it can be changed, by the way. But uh, but you got to first be aware that you might be draining people. And maybe you're not. Maybe it's just joking. So racing, you can uh, tell me if you think you are or not. Uh, uh, zero Alice. I, there's so many names that they're just going faster than I can tell. I am Brick, Brick Talks. Or, yeah, I think something like that. Okay. So, um, any other questions? Debias uh, just joined us. And okay, so are you an emotional vampire or not, uh, Raisin? Let me know, Alexandra. How do I deal with friends who constantly criticize my job? I'm in law, thank you. If they constantly criticize your job, you might wanna say, for example, uh, you say something about, oh, lawyers are all a bunch of crooks. Oh, really? Uh, tell me one that you know uh, that's a crook. Such and such. Oh, okay, I'm sorry to hear that. Now, uh, what are we going to do for lunch? Are we going out for lunch? No, but you know, I don't know. You shouldn't be involved. Really? Well, I'll think about it. Don't ever jump into the toxicity. Just uh, navigate them. But if they keep going and keep going and keep going, ask yourself, what is the need for me to continue to have a friend like this? Friends are supposed to uplift. They're supposed to be there and support and enjoy and especially celebrate life with you. If they don't do that, hell with them, get rid of them. There's a law of uh, the journey, on the path of the journey. Once you keep people when you know that you can't keep them anymore because they're toxifying them, you're literally carrying them on your back 
and you feel the pressure of being on. So sometimes the letting go is extremely important and it'll be good for that person because they'll know that they can't toxify you anymore. So it's very important to do that. How can I stop being an emotional vampire? Well, what is it that, that you're putting out? What kind of poison are you putting out? And the poison that you're putting out might be the part of you that you're having a hard time accepting. For example, you might be acting like an idiot and uh, you ask yourself, why do I act like an idiot with people? Go back and find out how you learn to be that way. Sometimes, because you see, we learn love from what I call the culture editors, which are important people in our lives, father, mother, teachers. And sometimes a father or a mother, the only way you can pay, the only way you can get attention from them is to get in trouble, to be a clown, or to let them criticize you. So what you do is you wrap love around that and without knowing it, you're putting it out to other people, especially people that you like. So one of the things you do, you, you begin to untangle all that crap from love and begin to love yourself without that. And then gradually, instead of being critical of people, find something about them that you like and let them know and see how it feels. At first, it's going to scare you a little. But for example, say, you know, I noticed that you, you're really very bright. I like that. And at first, you might feel a little tense, but, but breathe and allow that to be assimilated. And after a while you'll notice that you'll start accepting good things about yourself and then you can put them out to other people in the world. And I talk about that in my book, so if you're interested in, uh, in, in that, uh, The Mind-Body Code or The Mind-Body Self are great books. They're both bestsellers and I go into great detail. So, uh, Ellie, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gina, welcome. Let's see. Uh, uh, country. Country. All right. I don't really like to read. Well, that's why they have audio. So that's not an excuse. Get the audio. And uh, you'll get the same thing. Some people don't like to read. So get the audio. Uh, Ingrid, hey. Ingrid, how are you? Ingrid Holmes. Uh, Taylor. I'm, getting, I'm seeing some repeats here. That's really nice. The people that are beginning to join and, and following the, uh, the tribe. The tribe of wellness and excellence. Everybody here is beautiful and brilliant. And I don't want to hear anything that's not uh, that. Is the book on Apple Audiobooks? I think so. You have to check it out. But if not, you can get it at, at Amazon. I think it is. So, uh, hello. Uh, oh, oh, the, uh, as I said, I can't make it out because of the white uh, on my white uh, or uh, my gray uh, T-shirt. Isabella. Uh, Lainey. I am uh, low key. <laughs> Very creative. All right, any other questions about affiliation self-esteem? I don't know how long we've gone, but we have an hour, and uh, I'm not sure how close we are to, to an hour. If those of you are keeping time, uh, let me know. What is the name of the book? Two books, The Mind-Body Code or The Mind-Body Self. And I'll be coming out with a new one. Uh, it's called The uh, Phoenix Self, and that's gonna be a fiction, it's gonna be a novel, but based on good science about aging, about longevity and how to do anti-aging. So um, uh, the Pathu, or Patho, Pathu joined. And uh, welcome everybody. So um, Adrian, A Adriana, ES. So, uh, oh, we, and by the way, uh, which one should I read first? I would suggest you read the Mind-Body Code first. And then if you feel like you gonna wanna go further, go to the Mind-Body Self. Mind-Body Code, they're both bestsellers, but The Mind-Body Self has a, been a more of a bestseller for some reason that I don't know, but they're both good. I uh, put a lot of work into them, and uh, they're both from, from good publishers. One is from Sounds True, and the other is from Hay House. But I made them bestsellers without Hay House. They didn't really support that much, but I made them a bestseller anyway, just how it is from some publishers. Um, so, Rosalind, Nancy... Big Peppa Pum, <laughs> Michelle Baker, any questions? How strength, talking about affiliation, self-esteem, which is the third pillar of self-esteem based on my theory of biocognitive science. I developed biocognitive science, which is mind-body in a cultural context. And cultures are very important. Cultures will teach you the aesthetics of things, the morals, the, the, the wellness, how to get sick, how to heal, all those things, cultures will teach you that. How to look, how to dress, based on the portals. So uh, cultures are very powerful. 
Any other questions? I think so. Uh, the book is $9.99, but the audio book is uh, $42. It's a hell of a lot of money for the audio. But anyway, there, there are several, so find out which is the cheapest and start with that one. Uh, yeah, thanks for checking. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, that's real expensive. I'll have to check with them and see why it's that expensive. So, uh, but thanks for letting me know. Yeah, the $9.99 is good. Uh, but I think there's some, uh, there's also Kindle, but I don't know if you don't want to read, then, then it would have to be an audio. Uh, so uh, check that out and, and let me know. Uh, Afro Cycled, how are you? Good to be here. So um, questions about affiliation, self-esteem, about uh, emotional vampires, about relationships, and about self-esteem in general, but especially affiliation, which is the part of self-esteem that brings people in. And you have to feel good about yourself before you pe bring people in, especially if you feel intimidated by people that might be better than you in something. I would suggest that the best way to get friends in is if you see somebody that's better than you in something, bring them in. Because you will learn to be around quality people, but also you'll learn to be able to admire without envy, which is a real good quality, admiration without envy. At first, you might feel a little bit of envy, but then after a while, bring bring the sense of uh, celebration in, and you'll see that then it'll life will be great because then you're celebrating your own stuff plus the celebration of other people, which is, it increases the ability to for gratitude. Uh, let's see, uh, Afrocycle, hi, I'm good. Well, great, glad to hear that. And if you have any questions, please uh, go ahead. Um, uh, Ciso Girl, just joined 67. I have a negative voice in my head. How do I quiet down? What is a negative voice saying to you? Um, and, and what does it remind you of? <clears throat> you can put that negative voice in front of you and say, okay, so what do you want? You got five minutes. Give me all you got. After five minutes, you're gone. But see who it reminds you of, because it might be reminding you of something. It's cheaper on Amazon. I'm going to buy it through there. Oh, great. Very good. I'm glad you're following up. Yeah, so it's cheaper on Amazon. That's good to know. See, I didn't know that. Uh, do you think inpatient is necessary for depression that's gotten worse, not able uh, to leave my bed? Well, that's something that I can't tell you here because I'm not treating you as a patient. I would say, talk to your professional that you're working with, a psychiatrist or a psychologist, and come up with an agreement between the two of you and see what happens. So, uh, but also find out what's depressing you Find out what it is that you need to do in order to grow. But sometimes depression is, is self-hatred or self-deprecation. But you need to talk to your therapist because I can't give you that kind of advice here. It would be unethical for me to tell you one way or the other. But I would say talk it out with your professionals, uh, psychiatrist, psychologist, a mental health worker, and then decide. And then be willing to talk and work with each other. And if you want the book in addition to, never replacing, but in addition to professional, the book will be very helpful, I think. So that would be what I would say. Um, just catching up uh, with what's going on. Well, what's going on is I'm talking about affiliation self-esteem, which is one of the three parts of self-esteem. And it has to do with the people that you choose to bring into your life of quality. It goes up. If you bring bad quality or too much quantity, it goes down. This is why sometimes you'll see people who are exceptionally successful, let's say uh, they run a multi-billion dollar company, they have good, competent self-esteem, but then they go home and their partner just beats them up emotionally. They don't have value, uh, valuation self-esteem or they have no friends. They don't have very much affiliation. So you see, you need the three. Um, uh, I say the worst things to myself Lots of guilt, so it makes sense. Yeah, but find out somebody taught you to put yourself down like that. Find out. And once you do that, find out who do you know that likes himself or herself and begin to model that behavior. And what parts of you do you know that you're willing to accept for now? There's always something good about you. What are you willing to accept and always embody it? How does it feel for me? Let's say you're honest. How does it feel for me to be honest? And you feel it. And somebody says, yeah, but you're not... Don't want to hear it now. How does it feel, to be honest? You, you can't control your thoughts. You can only control the way you respond to your thoughts. There you're in control. So don't try to control your thoughts. When they come out, navigate them. So don't be afraid for them to come. Learn to respond to them. There you have control. 
uh, Brandy, uh, Aaron, why? A lot of people here. That's really wonderful. And especially you've been having asking some really, really good questions. And, um, and some of you are getting the book and you can get it audio. You can, as, as uh, it was mentioned here earlier, uh, you can go to Amazon.com and it's uh, The Mind Body Code and The Mind Body Self, two books, both bestsellers. And I put quite a bit into it. So I think you're going to find quality, you're going to find good stuff. But you can also go to my YouTube channel, Dr. Mario Martinez, free videos there, over 130 videos. Some of them from here. This one will be, will be on tomorrow, will be uploaded tomorrow, uh, and it'll be available. And the title will be the, the, the Third Pillar of Self-Esteem Affiliation. And you can watch it uh, as long as you want to. Uh, so um, uh, also remember to follow my work, just like, uh, like Brandy did. Follow my work because that way I have an, a larger audience and you'll know when I'm coming up with something new. So Carmen is here, surfing. Uh, quite a few people. Any other questions? All the questions have been great and they have been really good. Uh, me too, Brandy. I think it's uh, a work at not doing it. Uh, it's a work at not doing it. I'm not sure if I get that, but try to clarify, Sadie. I'm not really sure. Smile 247. How do you make a 247 smile? You want to explain that? <laughs> Do you know, let me tell you about smiles. There's something called the Duchenne smile or the Duchenne laughter. The Duchenne laughter is the real laughter, which is what's good for your immune system. You laugh and it's contagious. But when you hear what's called a social laughter, which is like a cackle, <laughs> like that kind of thing, and you go like that, that's social laughter. That comes from here. It's not coming from the stomach. And that's not genuine. That's just saying, let me laugh because they want me to think that it's funny or or let me laugh just to reduce anxiety. You notice sometimes when people get together and they're not socially comfortable, they'll laugh at anything. I just walked in from the rain, ha, ha, ha. Well, you know, it's a little hot, ha. What the hell is that? Laugh at things that are funny. So you want to learn to connect your emotions with what's going on. You don't have to be a clown. You don't have to be a buffoon. When somebody says something that's not funny, just look at them. You'll give them a cue that it's not funny. But if you laugh, you're encouraging to continue to give you things that are not funny. So uh, remember, only the Duchenne laughter is allowed here, not uh, the uh, uh, the social laughter, which is the social laughter is annoying. It's loud and annoying. The Duchenne laughter is contagious. You laugh, you kind of automatically laugh because it feels real, and that's a human connection. The other one is socialized laughter, which is not very good. By the way, vampires, not, not everybody who laughs like that is a vampire, but vampires laugh like that. That's another thing. Uh, uh, sorry if you have to counteract back things. Uh, your mind tells you uh, with good things that are true. Well, yeah, what you do is first you, when it comes in, you let it come in. Don't fight it. Oh, I don't want to hear it. No, just let it come in. The, the voice or the thought or whatever says you're a bad person. Okay, let it come in. Don't engage it. All right. What is good about me? Find out, but here's the important thing. What is good about me? For example, you say, I am, uh, I am a, um, a generous person, okay? Then show generosity for a week. I don't mean giving money, but generosity, any kind of generosity. Then when you give evidence to your brain, the thoughts will go down because the, the brain needs evidence to counteract negative thoughts. So you can't just intellectually say, I'm not gonna think about this anymore. You give it evidence of what you're good about, and then that will work. Practice and you'll see, it works. What you're good about, practice it, and the negative thoughts will no longer have any audience because the evidence doesn't support it. The brain is evidence-based, remember that. And you have to embody things in order for it to work. Uh, how do I uh, handle emotional unrest, particularly anxiety? Well, first, find out under what conditions do you feel anxiety? What causes anxiety for you? How did you learn to be anxious? And meditation is a really good method. I have some techniques in my books on uh, meditation, but very simply, you close your eyes and you pay attention to what's going on, what I call the noise. And it's gonna be a lot of noise and thoughts will come in. Don't engage, let them come in, drop your shoulders, don't clench your teeth, close your eyes, and then just pay attention to what's happening as if you're watching a film. Don't engage, keep doing it. 
and you do it for 10 minutes and the anxiety will be reduced. But you have to find out what is causing the anxiety so it doesn't go up again. Under what conditions does it happen and how are you contributing to it? And who was anxious in your family that taught you anxiety by you watching it? So those are just quick techniques that you can begin to, to practice. Thank you, that is something I will start working on. I don't know about the week. I didn't think, I didn't know about the week, okay? Uh, I got to hold my neighbor's baby today because I showed her generosity. Babies are delightful. That's wonderful. That's, uh, oh, Nina, hi. Uh, yeah, that's a wonderful thing. See, that's a form of generosity. And that is what's called eudaimonic pleasure. And not demons. Eu means um, uh, good. And daemonic in Greek means spirit, good spirit. Aristotle talked about that. He said that the life with the type of pleasure that has meaning and purpose is much better than Delicia. Welcome. Any other questions? I think we're getting close to the end here because I've been here quite a while. If anybody came from the beginning and uh, knows how long I've been here, let me know so that we don't uh, cut abruptly here. So, um, Emily Salgado, Sadie, um, any questions before I kind of wrap it up here? I don't kind of wrap it up. I wrap it up. It's not like or anything like that. Uh, hold to cost no, not grudges. I think I screwed that one up, but I think you know who I am. Kim, Burley, Vermont. Wow, a lot of people here. Any other questions? Any other questions? Be, be sure that you follow my work. That way you'll know when I have something going up. And I'm putting things up almost every day. So uh, it's really uh, uh, quite a bit of information that you're getting. Thank you. Went to make a, a few notes in my journal. Wonderful. That's really great. Uh, uh, this is after cycle. Very good. It's uh, proud of you. And, um, and just enjoy. Enjoy what we're doing. Um, Brenda, will I have to move? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Please keep creating content. TikTok needs your voice. True. Shaking your butt is nice. Uh, it's fun, but there's more to life than that. So I think that, uh, um, that, that you can get a lot of information here, a lot of good stuff here. So um, it's a combination of having fun and learning. Combination of the two. You don't want to give one up or the other. Just have balance. That's the key to life. Balance. Balance. So uh, be aware. Okay, Zodiac is here. And uh, the list goes on and on and on. So, any other questions before I leave here? I'm about ready to leave. And uh, be sure that check, you check tomorrow on my YouTube channel, Dr. Mario Martinez, and make sure that you follow. It's very important. That way I, I, was, uh, uh, I, I was able to, to get the, um, the videos in. I was told I might be forced to move if you were for you'd be forced to move find out what is the advantage of getting the hell out of there <laughs> that's how you look at things what is the advantage of getting the hell out of there so check it out and let me know vermont okay uh aspiring to inspire oh, that's pretty good very nice creative okay so when something bad happens don't be pollyanna and say oh how wonderful feel uncomfortable about it and say okay what is the advantage here how can I grow from this? How can I grow? And you'll see that you'll be able to navigate adversity a lot better if you let it overcome you. Make circumstances adjust to you, not you to circumstances. That's a beautiful saying and it's not mine. Aristippus, a Greek philosopher said it. He was a student of Socrates. So anybody else with any other questions before you go? So uh, if you were, you were forced to move, start looking around for something better and tell yourself how grateful I am now that I have an opportunity to be in a better place. I never want to be where somebody doesn't want me to be. That's the way to look at it. It's not easy, but you can practice it. You'll learn to navigate. And that's the whole idea here. Okay. Anybody else? I'm going to have to leave because the time is about ready to expire. So enjoy. Go back to my channel and follow it. If you have comments, please do. And uh, let everybody know. Speaking about affiliation, I'm currently living in a friend's apartment and I feel the what? 
I don't know what you mean, but keep keep going. I feel the before I leave, I'll try to answer that question. Um, this is a, a, a is is a bit uh, strangled. Well, maybe because you probably don't have enough space, emotional space, and, and and so forth. So you're gonna have to make plans. Then okay, I'm here for a period of time, and then I go. When the brain doesn't have time space conditions, it causes more anxiety. When you say, I'm gonna be here for a year, for a month, for a day, the brain will adjust to the time and space. So have a plan and be willing to make the changes, but also be grateful for what you're getting. And if you can, try to set some limits, not aggressively, but ask for certain things that you need, maybe some privacy that you need and see if that's given to you. But meanwhile, look around and make plans to leave. Once you have a time space con uh, commitment, your brain will adjust to that and the anxiety will be reduced if you try that. Okay, so thank you for all the questions and uh, it was really a pleasure to have you here. And enjoy and be bright and beautiful. If somebody doesn't accept it, the hell with them. All right, enjoy, bye-bye.